to me, it's just quick math, yeah? That's all science is to me, and the people, it's what I love about doing these events, I see some familiar faces, people have come back, so I know there's people in here that have seen me break down science in a very simplified way. But I'm curious, because I do see some unfamiliar faces. Who's never been to a Hidden Science Academy event before? Show of hands. Wow. Wow. For those people who have never been to a Hidden Science Academy event before, I've got one thing to say to you. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. So what are you going to learn today? So I'm going to make you out. It was it was humorous as well. So and, and the way the information was broken down was amazing. And I definitely will be coming back to more of the hidden science <laughs> um, events because yeah, I learned so much and I'm just so grateful to to be able to be a part of it and experience it. Very good, really interesting, really good, very inspiring, and I would recommend it to anyone to come, and we will come back again. Well, I thought the event was fantastic. Um, I thought the delivery w was fantastic, the presentation, the breaking down of complex ideas so that everybody could feel um, involved and can participate was exceptional, and the interaction with the um, video material was superb. Hidden science, man. Hidden science. Thanks. So, the more we start to study self, study our own history, the more we'll start to realise that Gang culture or gang violence is not black culture. It is not black culture. And the more we start to study our own history, the more we'll truly gain knowledge of self. And when we gain knowledge of self, we'll naturally drop anything that doesn't pertain to self. We'll naturally drop anything that doesn't pertain to self. Like we'll be walking around and just drop it. And people will be like, uh, excuse me, you dropped something. <laughs> what, what did I drop? I think you dropped your culture. My culture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, let me check. Hold on a second. Uh, torture. Gang. 
gang violence, war, rape, pedophilia, cannibalism. Nah, this is your culture, right? <laughs> I picked it up by mistake. <laughs> Take it back. Greetings, family. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to this masterclass that we've entitled The Hidden Science of Understanding Self. Big up all the family that's in the chat. I see you. Welcome, I can see the numbers rising. Thank you all for joining us this evening. You're in for a treat, trust me. Big up Monica from Brooklyn, I see you sis. So you got in, so that's all good. So yes, large up the family. Big up everyone for joining us this evening. So looking forward to sharing what we've got for you this evening. So much information that we're gonna be sharing tonight. I am the host, for those that don't know who I am, my name is Leon Marshall. I'm going to be hosting tonight's webinar. And in a moment, I'm going to be introducing the main speaker, our tutor, our teacher for tonight's masterclass, Dana Byfield. Now, Dana is a uh, performance coach and a human behavior specialist. And I'm sure you guys will have many, many questions for her as she goes through her pre presentation. She's got so much knowledge and information with regards to human behavior and, you know, increasing people's performance with regards to knowledge of self and all of that sort of stuff. Very intriguing subject that we're going to be covering tonight. So I hope that the family, you all, you know, give us feedback and make this very interactive. I want you guys to ask questions, make comments, and there will be an, a point later on in the webinar, in the masterclass, where you guys can go live. So you guys should know by now to go live, you just raise your hand and then we'll come to you and then you can unmute your mic and ask your question or make a comment or interact however you want to interact. For those of you who don't want to go live, you can always use the Q&A as well. Yeah. So I'll be introducing Dana in a little bit. But before I introduce Dana, just a couple of things that I want to cover. First off. This is a very interesting subject and a very intriguing subject. We got a lot of good feedback from you guys when we put this out, when we put the registration out and we told you guys that we're gonna be doing a masterclass. So big up you guys for showing interest in this type of thing. It should be interesting to you. We're talking about you, understanding you better. So there shouldn't be nothing more interesting than that. But yeah, we got such a good response that I'm really looking forward to the feedback that we get after this one. And who knows, we may, we may have to do this again. Who knows, we'll see how this one goes. But with that being said, if this is the scope, if this is the scope for everything that we can teach you or go over tonight, we've probably got time to go over about this much, yeah? Because time's gonna fly, you know, time flies when you're having fun and that sort of stuff. So if this is the scope for everything that we can teach you with regards to knowledge yourself and understanding self, we've probably got time for this. But with that being said, we're going to share as much uh, powerful information as we can in the short space of time. And we've got some bonuses. So everyone stay right to the end as well, especially VIP members. If you're a VIP member of the Hidden Science Academy, then stay right to the end because we've actually got something very special for you guys. We've actually got an extended Q&A with Dana. So you guys have a like a, a deep diving session with Dana. Any questions that you didn't get answered throughout this masterclass, you can ask her during that extended Q&A. And that is only for VIP members, by the way. But there will be some other stuff as well for members, non-members and all that sort of stuff. So stay right to the end. We're going to make this as interactive as possible. And hopefully you'll learn some a couple of things about yourself that you didn't know. Yeah. So without further ado, I am going to introduce our tutor, our teacher for tonight's masterclass. And her name is Dana Byfield. How are you doing, Dana? I'm absolutely just so excited to be here 
if anybody else is as excited as I am, please drop some ones in the chat because I have been raring to go since Leon. Drop some ones in the chat, family. Drop some ones in the chat if you are excited. We're excited if you to are be interested, here. Interested? If you are intrigued? If you feel like you know everything there is to know about yourself and you don't think you could possibly learn anything else, everybody just drop some ones in the chat. I want to see some Love. fire emojis. I'm gonna vibe off of your energy. So I need the energy from you guys this evening if you're in the UK, this afternoon if you're in the States. I know we've got people all over the world tuning in. So give me some love, give me some fire. And that is exactly what I'm going to reflect back to you. So without further ado, let's get going. So as Leon said, my name is Dana and I am the founder and managing partner of the High Performance Group Limited. And not just High, H-I-G-H, Hyper, H-Y-P-E-R. And we will come on to why I chose to call the company that later. But most importantly, there is nothing more that I love than getting under the skin of people. I think I was about the age of three or four when I first realized, oh, like, if you really connect with people, you can get what you want. Real quick story, guys. When I was three, I wanted to get some McDonald's. Of course, mommy said no. Why? There's food at home. So when mommy went to work, I took my fast self at three years old down to Tottenham High Road. If anybody remembers the old McDonald's back in Tottenham High Road, I'm not going to give away my age, but I'm giving away my age. I took myself down there. It was hysterical. Crowd started. Why are you not at home? And I was like, because I'm going to get McDonald's and family. Guess what happened? Someone went and told the people in McDonald's that this little three-year-old girl had left the house by herself because she wanted McDonald's. So they gave me the McDonald's. So I'm well tried, tested, because you can't even speak, I'm so excited. Well tried, tested, and trained in the art of people. Now, what our company does is we unlock the secret superpower, which is the power of you. By raising your awareness, understanding and skill of self. And we work with corporate organizations, business owners, high performers, and teams to really unlock that secret superpower so that we can go from good to great, to excellent, to quantum. Now, you heard about me escaping the house at three years old, okay? It was peak for my mum from early. I just have to apologize. Sorry, mommy, you were a fantastic mother and I was given a headache from very early on. But that's a really, really important part to bring you guys to early on. So you're seeing me here now, as Leon said, the tutor, the teacher, I prefer to call myself really more of a guide, um, a coach. My firm belief is that each and every one of us already have the answers inside of us. But a lot of the time it's buried under isms, under social conditioning, you know, what's happened in the environment around us. So we just, we can't, we can't hear our own excellence, but it's there. So I'm a firm proponent of helping other people unlock what's within them. So I've got two beautiful children. I'm married. My husband's on the call. We would have been married for 10 years in August. So big up to the hubby supporting in the chat. Throw some ones down for hubby. Love you, love you, love you lots. And life is good. But unfortunately, it hasn't always been that way. I want to take you back to one of the most instrumental days in my life. Please picture this. I'm a young mum, recently single. The bailiffs have come. They've locked up the house. I have all my worldly possessions on the lawn. And I have my small child standing next to me. And I thought to myself, how on earth did I get here? Now, for some reason, I don't know why, but I have the presence of mind in that moment to say that this is a repeat pattern of history. And either you're going to be responsible for writing a new history or condemned to the one that you were born into. And I decided that I was going to write a new history without any knowledge about how I was going to do that. And that's one of the things that brought me to the study of self. So I went from having all my worldly possessions out on the lawn, being a single woman with a child, 
unemployed on welfare and benefits in a very small time frame, found myself a company director of an organization completely by accident, literally within 72 hours. I would love to tell you that story. Actually, I might tell the VIP members that story. Any VIP members, if you want me to dig deep into that story about how I went from benefits to the boardroom in 72 hours, drop some fire in the chat. You know how this one is gonna go. And that's really where I started trying to unpick how is it that I've got to the stage in life that I found myself in? And as I said, I went from benefits to the boardroom in 72 hours. I went from having a very negative relationship with myself. And I'm sure that there may be some of you here that at some point in your life, you've had a negative relationship to self. And I always like to say, as so within, as we are without, we cannot extricate or separate ourselves from the things that are happening around us in the world. They are the product of us. So the fact that I had a kind of negative self-identity, not that anybody else would have known to the world, I was strong, I was there, I was doing my thing, I was successful. But inside, quite frankly, there were times when I felt like I was crumbling and it might seem quite serious to say, but I felt like I was literally dying inside because I was holding up this facade, this mask of who I thought I needed to be to get ahead in this world. And that was everything that was opposite from me. So not only did I get off the front lawn, okay, I became a homeowner, landowner, property owner. I went from single to married. I had more children. And most importantly, I found me, and that's a continual process. I don't think there's ever going to be an end point to that, okay? So this isn't, you get there and everything's fine and that's it. This, this is not about a destination, guys. This is about a journey. So anybody that wants to hear about the journey, drop some heart, drop some fire, and let's go. One of the most important things I always like to be transparent with people about why I do the work that I do it's actually for the generations that are going to come after us, right? It's for those people who are not even born yet. This is really who I show up for in the world because I believe that too many of us have inherited patterns that we then weren't able to overcome that have sowed the seeds for many generations to come. So I'm all about them babies that haven't been born yet. And because I focus on that as a byproduct, the people that I hear right now, you, me, us, the family, we benefit. But I want you to know that I'm clear. This is bigger than a company, bigger than money, bigger than those of us who are here now. I, I have a vision for the world in 100, 200, 300 years time where we're not really needing to have these conversations anymore. So what can you expect from this evening? I see the chat is going wild. Please keep it please keep it going, please, please keep the vibes high. That's really what this calls for. We are gonna dig into self. We are gonna find out things about ourselves this evening that we didn't know were there, but are actually already there. All I'm doing is helping you highlight that. I'm gonna show you something called the arc of nature. When I found the arc of nature, guys, life changed, right? And I'm gonna go into that. We're gonna be talking about what is the self? We're gonna go through, we're gonna define what self is, I think far too often in society, we say things like have self-love, you know, have self-esteem. We throw around these terms, but actually, unless you have a manual, a tool book, a teacher, a guide, someone to help you through, it's just really empty platitudes and words that you then think you should know how to action like, oh yeah, I should love myself more or I should have more self-confidence, self-esteem. But yet we can't even, you know, proper, properly define what does the self mean, okay? And then we're gonna go into some next steps about how we can take this learning further. So without further ado, I want everybody to put their first name, location, and tell me why it is that you're here. What do you want to get from this evening? Because guys, this is all about you. I wanna hear from you. The whole Hidden Science Academy team has come together to put this together 
for you guys. And we were actually not supposed to get going on this until the end of the month, but we decided to move things forward. Hi, Claudette, thank you very much. Where are you located, city, country? And even if it's one thing, what do you hope to get from this evening? Where are you having some challenges for those that want to share? Let us know. And not sure, that's fine, that's great. The fact that you're able to identify. Some people are here to, to meet and mingle. Some people are here for the vibe. Some people have got a definitive idea of why they're here. But for those that would love to share, I'd love to really find out specifically. All right, oh, I just saw someone that said, scared of their own greatness. Okay. Okay, the chat's moving so, so, so fast. Open to learning something new, deeper understanding of self, seek of knowledge. I want to learn how to deal with negative thoughts. Um, Kenya, continue self-development. We've got someone from Nairobi. Kenya here, Sylvia, self-awareness. Overcoming limiting beliefs. Thank you, Zwena. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Keep it all coming. Keep them coming. The team is going to be taking a note mentally of what you've put there and we aim to serve you as much as we possibly can. So the next thing I want to do is I want to prime us for learning. Human beings are so predictable. It's almost funny, okay? Our brains and our nervous systems are wired, guys, for one thing and one thing only, and that is our survival. Isn't that a kick in the head when you're trying to overcome self-esteem issues, break through self-sabotage, break through limiting beliefs, continually self-develop? All of these, what we would call high order thinking and goals, that is not what our brain and nervous system was designed for. It was designed to keep you alive. And it's proven a great system for survival, but not so much for thriving. So I'm gonna teach you one trick right now that you can use to prime yourself whenever you feel like you want to go and learn something, whenever you feel like you want to go to another level, whenever you feel like you're having challenges. So family, what I want you to do really quickly is close your eyes. Yes, guys, I want you to close your eyes. There's no boogeyman or anything like that, so we're good, right? Hold your hand, hands, cup your hands like this. Hope you guys can see the way that I'm cupping my hands. And rest the hands just under your chest area, okay? Make sure they're touching your body tight. Close your eyes. I want you to breathe in through the nose. Breathe in as far as you can. Hold for two seconds. Out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Two more, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And last one, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Good job, family. Give yourself a round of applause. So what you've just learned how to do is break that connection with the thought or chemical process that your body was actually in. Sometimes when we feel anxious, when we feel high, when we feel hyper, what we need to do is break the body's connection to that emotional and chemical state so that we can ground ourselves and calm. And that allows us to now have the executive function to move forward and do the thing that we want to do. So in our case, it's learn something, right? So put some ones in the chat if you found that activity that we just did together, calming therapeutic, grounding. So that's one of the tools that you can have in your armory whenever you feel like, okay, I'm going left, I'm going right, I'm veering off track. That's gonna interrupt that pattern quickly because a lot of the time we're trying to use conscious thought and that's very important, 
but actually you can hack your biology very, very, very quickly. And that is part of the art of understanding self. Okay. So guys, what I want to do now is I want to, I want to tap in and I'm sure that's a phrase that you have become very, very, very familiar with over time. But what do I want you to tap into? I want you to tap into the innate self understanding that you have. What we would call everything under the waterline of the iceberg. Guys, I'm sure you're familiar. Tip of the iceberg and then there's what's really going on underneath. That is where all of your superpower is, right? So I want us to hack that this evening. Who else wants to hack this with me? Anybody? Emojis? Ones in the chat? Love? Any, any emoji you can think of? Who wants to get deep, deep down, as they would say, right? Okay, we've got some 100s, some ones. Everything is going on, right? One of the earliest things that we all have interacted with from the time that we were young children is color, okay? And color is very significant because we already have ideological and we also have emotional connections to color, right? So if I said to you that someone has a fiery personality, what color would you associate with that person? Drop that in the chat. Red eyes, right? If I said someone had a very sunshine-like personality, what color would you associate that with? Yellow, okay, okay. Orange as well, yes. Orange, very, very, very close, right? So we've got, I love the variations of, of human beings and how we process and we think about things. All of those are fantastic answers. Chiefly, we would associate someone that has a very sunshine personality with yellow. Guys, what would we associate the personality type of someone who's very stable, very calm, very earth-like? What color would we associate with them? Green. I saw some blues as well, I saw some browns. Yes, yes, that is true. People who tend to be steady can have a very blue-like personality. Now, if I was to say that someone is very cool, very calm, very collected, what color would you associate? Blue. So you guys have got it, right? You guys have got it 100. Clap for yourselves because you are amazing. What you have just shown yourself is that you have an innate understanding, a subconscious understanding, a direct connection. Someone says I'm blue now, I love it. A direct connection to an understanding of yourself. So what you've just proved is that you've got the makings to become a master of understanding self, okay? So broadly speaking, most people will fall into one of those colors as their predominant personality type. Now we will have all four of those colors. Sometimes we're feeling a bit more cool and calm. Sometimes we're feeling a bit more earthy. Sometimes we're feeling a bit more sunshine and sometimes we're feeling a bit more red, right? But if I say to you right now, think of somebody that has a very red personality. Think of someone who's got a very red personality. There are certain and specific characteristics that you'd be able to pull out and say to me, Dana, this is how this person acts when they're showing very red personalities. So great, thank you. Yeah, direct, hot tempered. Somebody talked about the rainbow. Park that for me. And when we do the Q and A, just put rainbow in the chat. Michelle said excited, pushy. Hey auntie, yeah, blunt, okay. Now if we say someone's very earthy, they're very green. They're very green personality. What type of character attributes would you expect to see demonstrated? What behaviors would you expect that person? Balanced, good Jamie, calm, caring, collected, insightful. Love these things, kindness, supportive. So you guys have got this down to an absolute T. I'm super, super, super proud of you. So now guys, what I want you to do is I want you to self-identify 
right? Like I said, we, we will have all of these colors and trust me, they can change. Five minutes ago, I could be really, really, really fiery red. And then the next minute I could be very earthy green. But you know yourself well, which one of the colors, red, yellow, green, and blue, do you most relate to the majority of the time? So are you a red? Are you a yellow? Are you a green or are you a blue? And this is most of the time, guys. We don't do extremism. Of course, human beings are not one thing and we're not linear, okay? Okay, so we've got some greens coming in. We've got some, you've got people cheating. They're saying blue and green, I get you. It's just the one that you most identify with most of the time. Love it, red, someone saying blue and red. Gray wasn't even one of the options, guys. It's red yellow green or blue we've got some yellows in the house here fantastic family you're doing absolutely amazing so i just want you to hold that concept in your mind okay about who you already self-identify to be right we had a lot of people in the chat when we asked what are you here for um self-sabotage continual development negative beliefs, negative thoughts, all of those things. The thing I want to tell you is that there is no one color that is better than the other, okay? It's just you will have a unique mix and balance of those that you will be able to observe with your behavior and other people will be able to observe within you, okay? I want to give you another example to help aid this. If you think about athletes, and the different body types and the body shapes that athletes have. There is generally a distinct difference between the body type of someone who is an Olympic swimmer, right? Someone who is a power lifter, right? Someone who is a heptathlete and someone who is a sprinter. Would you guys agree that they're broadly speaking, there would be different aesthetics within those bodies, a power lifter, a sprinter, a heptathlete, et cetera, et cetera, and a swimmer, right? That's kind of how we relate to those colors. It's not to say that someone who looks like a power lifter in the body can't also swim, for example, but they have a genetic predisposition that helps them in the area of being a swimmer, for example, with very large hands, very large feet. So what we want to do today is help you utilize the genetic predispositions that you have through color. So when it comes to negative beliefs, self-sabotage, sometimes really having the wish and want to do something can move forward, but kind of feeling like, I really want to do this thing, or I really want to stop thinking negatively. I really want to stop self-sabotaging, but no matter how much I try, I still revert back to type. Anyone relate to that? Put some ones in the chat if you relate to what I've just said. I really want to move on, get over something, move past something. I self-sabotage, I have neg negative thoughts, all of these things, right? So many, 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 many people can relate. The challenge that we have here is that human beings don't see things as they are. We see things as we are, right? So if we're having an issue or a challenge with negative thoughts, for example, that is because the identity that we identify with is one that is negative and chiefly that is rooted in some experience, something that's happened to us, something that we've done in the past, a negative memory. Now we're, we're anchored to that. So we see the general world based on that negative experience or negative opinion that we have so family i want to give us all permission to break those chains today to break them today because it starts with a decision we can teach you all the tools the techniques the hacks in the world if you don't make a decision nothing will change and the root word of decision is side like herbicide homicide, right? Is to give yourself no option but to say, this is the way that I'm going to move forward. Your brain has no choice 
but to follow what you say you're going to do, what you identify with. It has absolutely no choice. It is enslaved by what you tell it to do and how it is programmed. So I wanna give you permission because that's something I find is a challenge with a lot of people. They want to do things. They know that they can if they put their best foot forward. And that looks different for everybody. But there's this part of them that almost needs somebody to say, enough, it's enough. It really is enough now, okay? Make the decision that you actually want to move forward and that we're gonna break these chains. Anybody with me? Can I get a witness? <laughs> okay, guys. So here are some tools of how we can deal with the situation anytime we are somewhere, but we would like to be somewhere else using our personality and our behavior and those all important colors that we discussed, guys. Is it okay? Can I go ahead? Can I go ahead? Can I drop some game on you guys? Are you sure? Are you ready? Oli, oli, oli. Oi, oi, oi. Somebody better have finished that sentence. Otherwise, I'm going to be really upset with you guys. Oi, Misha G, yes. Tankado. Forward. Okay, right. What I'd like you to do now is just really think about one thing that you know, if you couldn't fail, you'd really, really love to do. Oi, 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 Frederick. Just hold it in your mind. And you know that this is possible, you're capable, you're skilled enough, you're talented enough, or you know the right persons who are capable, skilled and talented and they can help you. Okay. Think of one reason why you haven't yet moved forward on that thing. Give yourself a second. And I want you to think to yourself, this isn't for out loud, what is it that you are afraid of, okay? Each one of those colors has a core fear, right? So often for people who have lots of blue, thank you, Misha, analysis paralysis. Oftentimes for people who have lots of blue in their personality, they have such a high level of conscientiousness. I mean, these are theoretical, logical, analytical, process-driven people who have such a high um, expectation of themselves and every single thing that they do, they want to be high quality. Can anyone resonate with this description that I'm giving now? Anybody, right? You like to have all the information. You like to measure twice, cut once, right? You don't want to get it wrong. High achiever, expectations way up here. So people who have lots of blue the, the key fear is getting things wrong. So what I want to give you permission and tell you today is there is a time for those exacting high standards, okay? And then there is a time when the standards don't need to be so high because that's where the analysis paralysis is coming from because you're gonna go back and you're gonna go back and you're gonna think and you're gonna think and you're gonna cut and you're gonna cut and you're gonna cut and you're gonna cut, you're gonna cut until you think it's right. And sometimes we need that super high standard. And this is one of the reasons why I love people that have, a, have you know, their blues, because I'm high yellow, high red, miss detail. Blue people, they're gonna catch that detail every time. But I want blues to know, or people that think there may be a blue profile, you don't have to have this almost impossible exacting high standard and one of the tips that you can use and employ to help yourself if you're having a negative thought, if, you, if you're getting into that territory of self-sabotage, is that you give yourself a deadline. Because one of the things that you're a master at is you're a master of systems and processes in a way that nobody else is. No one can lick you when it comes to system and process, right? So you need a deadline because you're going to keep measuring until you're forced to cut. Okay? And it's okay if you don't always meet those exacting standards. The world is not going to fall apart at the seams. You are not gonna fall apart at the seams. 
okay? And you're giving yourself gray hair, trying to be at 100 all the time, which is not realistic. For anyone who thinks they're maybe a more earthy, thank you, Misha, they're very steady, very compassionate, love people, put people before themselves, very people orientated, right? I like to call greens the social workers of society. They want to look after everybody before them look after themselves. They're stable, they're stalwart. They're like the earth beneath our feet. We can rely upon them. Sometimes us greens, we're having the negative thoughts and challenges and self-sabotage because we're too outward focused, right? We need to bring our focus inward, get to know us and check in with us to see if we have the capacity because we're so busy, busying with everybody else. Our life force is literally draining. We'll do it for everybody else. But then when it comes to us, oh, I feel negative. Oh, I don't think I can do it. Oh. This is literally exhaustion, guys. See, what we have to understand is, for you to give, our cup must runneth over. Right? Our cup must runneth over. And greens are people oriented people. See the world, they view the world, they view everything through the eyes of how is this going to affect everybody else. Newsflash greens, if you want different, you're gonna have to start bringing this all the way in, all the way inside and reflect. Give yourself a moment, sit down, stop answering the call, stop telling everybody you're gonna pick up the shopping and go down the road and do the driving two hours out your way. And then the killer is that you'll feel resentful of everybody else because you're doing it all. And you blues too, you build up this resentment because you said yes and you didn't really want to say yes. You said it because you're people orientated. You have to take responsibility for that, guys. You have to take responsibility. No is a complete sentence, Greens. No is a complete sentence, Blues. And there's different ways to say no. Thank you for thinking of me. I don't yet have the capacity for that at the moment. Thank you for offering me that opportunity. But as it's unpaid, it's not one that I can take up at the moment. I'd really love to take this on, but I wouldn't be able to do it justice. Here's someone maybe that could help. Great that you thought about me. At the moment, I've got a number of projects on and I'm just really not able to take this on as well. No is a complete sentence. Okay? Red and yellows, haven't forgotten about you. Where are my yellows at? Where are we? Coming to the room, life and soul of the party. Who's gonna be there? Who's gonna be there? Who's, who's cooking the food? Who's around? Try and leave the party. It takes you half an hour, 45 minutes to leave the party because you have to say bye to everybody. And you didn't recognize that Dean was over in the corner. So now you've got to go and talk to Dean before you leave the party. Speak fast, sunshine personality, in you know, everybody's things, quick to offer advice. Yellows have trouble and start self-sabotaging when moving too fast. It's too fast, too fast, too fast haven't got the capacity, overstretched, doing too much, need to slow down. No is also a complete sentence, but also mind your business is a complete sentence too. Don't always have to give unsolicited advice. That's not a sentence. I just want you to know that. You don't need to be going around the world telling everybody what they should do, because guess what? Everybody don't want to hear from you all the time, you know? And we understand is love, is love, because you see the world through people. That's right, drinking water and minding your business, Carla. We, the, our lens is people, right? There are certain folks that view the world through the lens of task. Our reds and our blues, it's all about the task. That's why sometimes they can come across as quite, you know, that they don't care. Oh, you don't care, you're just being bossy or just you don't even care. 
yellows, we're all about the people. How's it gonna affect everybody? I see great greatness in this person. I see their brilliance. Ain't nobody asked you about your brilliance today. Sit your yellow self down. Sit down or go and find another party to go and hold. Go and find another mic. Go and find another sound system to stand in front of. Today is not the day or this minute is not the time. So we start to come a cropper when we're trying to do everything for everybody. And again, we need to turn it inward. Okay, guys? So this is just a kind of pricey of, you will, you will have an innate feeling of where you sit in terms of color. And we're all a mix and blend of everything. But our yellows, we start to self-sabotage because we're going so fast. We forget the detail of things. Yellows, we're not great at the detail. Who's a yellow? Drop me some ones. You know what I'm talking about. You're moving fast, you talk fast, you move fast, you do fast, right? And we miss the detail. Then we start tripping up. Then we start lacking in self-confidence. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm not as great as I thought I was. Maybe I'm not as skilled as I thought I was. Maybe there's some skill, maybe I can't do it. Maybe this is gonna fail. That's where we come in. And reds? Oh, Reds, I'm coming for you. I am coming for you. Reds, drop a one if you're a red. My Reds. Uh, no, Red Vanessa. And I was just about to say, no, Reds are not the best. I have that as a disclaimer, right? Because Reds want to come and fast up themselves. And sometimes yellows. I think they're better than everybody else. Blind spot. Neon sign. Ew, ew. We're not better than everybody else, even though it's in jest. Everybody has their part to play. I don't know about you. I do not want a world full of reds running at 55 miles an hour doing and never checking the detail because you are going to get a lawsuit. We need a blue person around to say, um, excuse me, that sounds great. But you know, subsection two of this particular act states <laughs> it's illegal to do that, right? Blues will keep you out of jail. So no, reds. Monica, your husband's a red. So you, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's direct. It's do it now. It's, I want it done. It's too slow. It's not to my liking. They're driven. We love a red to get a problem solved. Because we could solve a problem like nobody else. Right? Newsflash though, you can get overextended by trying to solve everybody else's problems task focus we can forget about people in the pursuit of task your number one resource is your own self because you're a person and the people around you so reds we start to come and crop up when people are like mm, i don't really like you so much in the way that you are behaving at the moment red i don't want you to drive me you can drive you you ain't my boss. Okay? So we need to, to watch that energy because we're so focused on getting things done. Sometimes our blind spot is the people. Like football, you get a red card, you get sent out. Right? Okay. We've come to the time for insights, guys. I want you to drop in the chat. What is the number one insight that you've had since you've been on this call? And we've been on for about, I'd say 35, 40 minutes. What's the number one insight? Give them to me. Let's have a look at the chat. So what's the number one insight that you've had so far? So Alison, you're a mixture of colors. Caramel, awareness, fantastic. Keep them coming. What's your number one insight so far? Okay, need to get to know more. Look after self. Me being yellow, I know what to work with. Zen, thank you so much for saying that. This gives you an idea. Remember, this is just me talking for a little while. Imagine if you have the time to really study this stuff and deep dive. I haven't. As Leon said, if the capacity is this, 
I don't even think it's that. I think we're like here in terms of digging deep and then being able to pick up and apply, you know? That's why I say I'm like a bit like a guide. I want you to be able to pick up and apply. So we've got reflection, stop over analyzing and step out of my comfort zone. I know how to approach my yellow members of staff. Yes, your, your yellow members of staff, they're all about the public recognition. Talk nice to me. Talk nice to me in front of other people. Tell people nice things about me in front of other people. If you want to get a yellow team member on side, guys, we're talking about self, but this works so well if you're a line manager, if you manage, if you have a business, you're part of any type of team, you're a corporation, you're an entrepreneur, because then you know how to motivate your different employees based on who they are. Some employers will give a bonus and be like, well, you should be happy because I gave you extra money. Well, what somebody might have wanted was public recognition. Yellow, not saying that they wouldn't want some money too, however, because people do like a coin. You understand? But if you know that someone's task orientated, you can take a task off their desk. You can get someone to help them with their task and give them public recognition. You can give them a place that's stable. Your green employees will not do what you tell them to do if you don't give them systems and structures and processes to follow. And forget blue, if they don't have systems and processes, they're either having a nervous breakdown or they're gonna go out the door and not even tell you why. Okay? Perfectionism, perfection doesn't exist, that's the thing. And we all have that to some extent. Our blue brothers and sisters though, you have that at the highest level because you've got such exacting standards. Your level of conscientiousness and wanting to get it right is so high. But oftentimes you burn yourself out in the mind because you're trying to achieve this unattainable standard. Okay, most definitely agree me. Love it, April, April. Okay, so let us move on. Because time is ticking, guys. Who's enjoying themselves? Who's learning? Who's having a great time? Who's sitting there with their arms folded thinking, oh, I learned anything. She didn't tell me anything I didn't know. Tell me nothing. I know it all already. That's cool. We're good. Let's go. Anybody ever heard of Michael Jordan. One's in the chat. Yes. Anyone ever heard of Michael Jordan? Anyone ever heard of the Chicago Bulls? Six rings. We love it. Six rings. Michael Jordan had several problems, but a very huge problem. One of those problems was called Magic Johnson, right? Some of you might know where I'm going with this. If you think you know where I'm going with this, please drop it in the chat so everyone can get a little preview. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. Michael Jordan had a vision. He had a vision for the type of champion that he wanted to be. He knew himself inside out. He knows his physical limit limitations and strengths. He knows his mental limitations and strengths. He knows the team members that are around him, right? He knew himself as an athlete inside out. Power. Because Michael Jordan was like, we need Dennis Rodman over here because Magic Johnson is killing me. People out there are killing me. Now, everybody else saw this as a huge problem for MJ because Rodman was literally like fouling and doing all type of nefarious things, right? But Michael Jordan was focused on what he wanted to do, who he wanted to become. And he knew his strengths and he knew his limitations. There would be no Michael Jordan the way that he is now without Dennis Rodman, without Scotty Pippen. Those were three legendary seasons in the NBA where they ruled the world and went on not only to rule the world in that time, ballers, yes. They went on to change the course of how basketball was played forever. Now, I must admit, I was kind of like, okay, MJ, you took it to levels, right? Because he took it to a place where he was like, you know what? I ain't about no feelings. I'm about getting these rings. And that is the power that you can wield when you know yourself. And you can get to a level of emotional detachment in some areas. We want you emotionally attached in some. 
and not so emotionally attached in others. For any extremists that might be out there, I'm not advocating that we do not have an emotional connection. No, it's how we apply it. Michael Jordan was able to say, you know what? I don't care what's happened. This is how I'm going to get those rings. And when you know yourself, you can get your own ring. And what's your ring? Your ring is the life you want, the pride in yourself, the environments you want, the job, the career, the spouse, to be able to, to raise your children the way that you want to. That's how you get your ring. You get your ring, guys, by going inward, by receiving, by not just giving, people-pleasing, going along with the status quo. The status quo is there to make you focus on the outwards. And I'm not saying that that's not important to an extent, of course, but as within, so without. You, and the, the joke thing is, you've already got your ring. Regardless of whether you've got anxiety, limiting beliefs, all of these things, you've got your ring. It's inside. You're walking around with your ring, guys. And you know, because sometimes you feel it. Sometimes you, you feel it. You're like, what's that? Like, I need to do something here. That's your ring. So be more Michael Jordan. Another legendary sports person. I love sports, by the way. My mum was an absolute sports fanatic. So I grew up look, watching everything. Football, cricket, Formula One, basketball. And I'm talking football, not just English football. Um, Bundesliga. I'm going deep here, up in the morning. Serie A, any football fans in here? International wrestling, archery, uh, heptathlon, javelin, powerlifting, weightlifting, strongman. Hey, you couldn't test my mum when it came to sports, you know? Netball, cricket, everything. So a lot of my examples are sports examples for that very reason, because I believe that life, business and sports have so many trans world sports. Come on now, Jamie, come on. Trans world, life, business and sports have so many commonalities and I'm a very lateral thinker, right? So I make connection. Winter sports, slalom, anybody for slalom. What do they say when you're skiing? Don't look at the trees. Because anybody tell me what happens when you look at the trees and you're skiing? What happens? What happens, guys, when you're skiing and you look at the tree? What happens? Someone in the someone drop it in the chat right now. What happens? Brock off your back. They say watch the path. And the challenge for a lot of us is we're living life and we're watching the tree. And invariably, what happens? Bam. We broke off ourselves. Whereas if we watch the path, we learn how to navigate and move around. Okay? And my mum was watching everything. So big up Mumsy, everybody, big up Mumsy in the chat. Ones, twos, blues, reds, greens, everything. Because without her, there's no me. And so many of my life lessons came from her, despite our challenging circumstances. So big up mummy all day, every day. And mommy used to sit me down on a Sunday and say, you're going to watch Formula One because you're going to learn something. I said, what am I going to learn about watching these cars go round and round and round and round and round the track for two or three hours? This is boring. I learned some of the most valuable life lessons from Formula One. And when I coach individuals and when I coach groups, I coach through things like sports, business and my life lessons. And these are some of the most funny, hilarious Impactful though, stories, but I'm gonna tell you a short F1. It's not really a story, it's more like a quote. Lewis Hamilton is quoted as saying, the real heroes of Formula One is not him in the car, it's the team. How many of you out there know that depending on where your car is in the grid, I know I'm getting into detail in here, but depending on how like, are you a big F1 company or are you a smaller one? Every F1 team has between 300 and 1,200 people. Three and 1,200, guys. Three and 1,200. Most of the team that we know, we're, we're looking at the pit team, right? Race day team. Most lay people, we're like, okay, well, I know there's some of them people around. I'm talking about everybody. From the person who helps dismantle 
all the apparatus at race days to the people that are looking at the technical information that's coming from the car that's going to the factory from the folks in the factory who break down the vehicle to clean the vehicle to inspect the vehicle to put the vehicle back together and place new parts that are worn out to the marketing team to the social media team some of you might know where i'm going with this you're struggling with not being where you want to be because you ain't got no team. It's a you one. And you're the smartest person in the room. Trust me. My aim is always never to be the smartest person in the room. Can you imagine 1,200 people working to make this car move around, including the people that run the simulator in the manufacturing warehouse? that run simulations, that run thousands, maybe even millions of different plays. What could happen? Wind speed, the physicists, the scientists. You're struggling out here because you ain't got no team. All the best sports people in the world know, and we accept, we'd never expect a football team to come without a manager. We never expect an NFL team without multiple coaches. NFL, they take it to the streets. Quarterback coach, linebacker coach, yeah? I'm telling you, I'm in these sports streets. Love a sports, right? No man is an island. Thank you, April, April. And that's what this is today. This is, this is our team. This is our caucus today. This is our team. And we're getting it right today. One of the single biggest predictors of your success is the environment that you are in. I was saying to Leon the other day, I had a telephone call with a lady from Hungary. Listen to the name of the country. The country is called Hungary. That is how poor the people them is in the country, the country called Hungary. Right? Who's now worked her way into the position where she never has to think about money again. And she's young and kind and good hearted and does good things and runs a hedge fund, an ethical hedge fund that signed up to the equivalent of the Hippocratic Oath that doctors take. Who knew there was even such a thing? So she's blessed to live in the position where she ain't never have to think about money again. I spoke to another lady, had another meeting. She's the president of a financial service company, comes from poor Latina background. Those are her words, not mine. Ran a foundation, was sick of taking her begging bowl out to get money for this foundation and said, hmm, I wonder what business I can start that can pay for my foundation. And she realized that a lot of people in the Latina community were getting remittances from the US and they were unbanked. So what did my girl do? She set up Alterna Card, a financial inclusion uh, company for unbanked communities, starting with the Latina community now expanding out globally into the Caribbean, into the African continent. It's a nice person, been, doing, been in the streets for years. Got 8 million in angel funding. Got a 12 million development loan from MasterCard. You know how hard it is to get that type of money from corporate companies? But because she had a vision and she didn't let the circumstances that she came from determine where she was going in the future. She's been at this before the technology even existed. That's two conversations that I had in a week with two different women. One that comes from a country so poor, the country's called Hungary, and one that came from a single parent home, right? Your environment, I make sure I put myself in environments with people who are doing things way bigger than I am, because you know what? Everybody gets brought up by the current. So if you really wanna continue any self-development, Continual self-development. I can't speak when I get excited. Sorry, guys. Like, that's just what it is. Get over self-sabotage, negative thoughts. You've got to have to put yourself in an environment where other people are doing the same thing, where you can have um, guidance, tutoring, coaching, mentoring, where you can role play, where you can drill, where you can have that, that familial connection. Because you've done it the way that you've done it all of these years. And what are the outcomes? I live by outcomes. I want to see... What has changed? What can we observe that has changed? And that's a beautiful thing about behavior. We can observe our own behavior and each other's behaviors as well. 
Now I want to move on to something that always gets a tickle, all right? Impact outcomes and change generation. Thank you, Bianca. That is beautiful. I want to give you some examples of some famous people and what their colors are, okay? Maybe we do a little thing where I ask you what you think they are. Okay, someone tell me, Dame Dash, red, yellow, green, or blue. Go in the chat. Red. Sorry, Someone's Dana. Yellow. A lot yeah. of people have joined since we opened up and some people, they may not be aware of what the colors represent. Would you be able to quickly- uh, Okay, yes, guys, so of course. So what we're talking about, guys, is our own innate understanding of our personalities and other people's personalities. So red kind of stands for like that fire personality, that person that's always kind of driving and, and getting things done. Yellow is the kind of like, you know, sunshine in the room, you know, the, always the one at the party that's right in the middle, right by the um, MC booth, right by the sound system, real people person, just lights up the room that they come in. Green individuals, they're very steady. They're very stable. We think of like the earth. They're very compassionate. They love other people very, very deeply and often put other people to, you know, at the forefront to their own detriment. And then we've got um, blue um, behavioral traits where people are very high conscientious, high standards, methodical, attention to detail. They want to know exactly how to get the job done and how to get it right, okay, before they move forward. So now we're bringing in some celebrity examples that I saw lots of red and I saw a couple of smatterings of yellow for Dame, for Dame Dash. Now I must say, I have not yet personally worked with Dame Dash in this area, but we can put it out into the universe. This is just what I'm observing from people's behavior. And that's one of the things that I do as, as a specialist in human behavior. I really have a keen eye, nose and sense for people and where they are and their personalities and what drives them what the great aspects of them are and where they have limitations and blind spots. So I make Dame Dash a red, very direct language. But this is one of the other ways that we can gauge what people's colors are and our own. What language do we use? Do we use very direct or indirect language? Dame Dash, I'm never gonna have a boss. Just go and do it. Make your own films, bring our own money. Don't let anybody you, right? He's about getting it done, task focused, task orientated. He ain't trying to take all day about this thing. So we would say that he's a very red energy person. So if you're dealing with somebody who's a red energy person, you want to be like direct, straight to the point. You want to give them outcomes, timelines. What are we doing? That's the version of talking to them nicely. If you're a red person, yeah. One of the things that you'll be aware of is that sometimes you're moving a little bit too fast. So you will miss some pertinent details about yourself, things that you need to give yourself to keep you topped up and moving forward. Now, the next one, a little bit of a controversial one at the moment, but we're sticking to the personality of the individual and not the things that happen surrounding them, Chris Rock, whatever. If I say to you, Will Smith, are we going red, yellow, green, blue? Talk to me. Will Smith, red, yellow, green, or blue? Oh, we're mixed on this one. All is not an all is not an answer, guys. We need to follow the instructions. Predominant, which is the one you think predominates? Right, we've got some yellows, we've got some reds. Okay, I would say that based on my observation of Will Smith's behavior, that his predominant color would be yellow, very closely followed by red, right? People person, didn't want to divorce his first wife, wants to stick with his family. He loves the limelight. He's an actor, one of the biggest and best that we've ever had, right? I would say he's very, very, very much yellow closely followed by some red okay barack obama red yellow green blue and guys this is this question isn't to say that these individuals may not be any of the other colors we're all all of them it's the proportion so i'm asking you about the one that you think would be the highest so we've got a few greens we've got some blue we've got some green and blue green oh we're neck and neck we've got one red there green and green 
Yellow with blue. Okay, Colo, that's very interesting. I would say Barack Obama, based on my observation of his behavior, is predominantly green. Even if we think about his campaign slogan that he ran in 2008, it was, yes, we can. Not yes, I can. Yes, we can. And Greens are people orientated. If you think about his demeanor when you hear him speak, very earthy, very grounded, very stable energy. But yes, I can see why some people have said blue as well, because he's definitely got that high level of conscientiousness. And the last one in this little quiz is Condoleezza Rice, former Secretary of State for the USA. Are we going red? Are we going yellow? Are we going green? Are we going blue? Blue, red, blue, red, blue. I think we're going blue, guys. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of red going on there. Based on my observation, I would say Condoleezza Rice is blue. Very high achiever. Been to some of the best schools in the world. Made it to the highest levels of office in the US. Poise, dignity, blunt. Conscientious, though. Likes to do the right thing. Anyone has seen Condoleezza Rice speak in interviews. She's very measured, right? She's not giving too much away. Right, she's clearly got a process. She likes to follow the process. Condoleezza was not going to be rattled or moved by anybody. And that is a blue trait. And some people say they're stubborn, their own way, right? And they are, because in their mind, if it doesn't make sense, I'm not going there. I said, someone says, I need you to be my P PA. Re-clarify, Janet, what, what do you mean, what do you mean? Right? Someone's asking if these are shackles. We're just talking about red, yellow, uh, green and blue as it relates to different people's personalities. Okay? So that's just a little fun exercise that I do with individuals. The primary goal of that exercise is to really to start to get you to think about what your predominant color is, right? And as an expert in human behavior, what I do is I use that and then we use tools and the tools give us not a definitive answer. They give us a snapshot of time in time when they're used that tells us what is the proportion that you have of red, yellow, green, and blue. Because each and individual person has a unique mix of those colors represented in their personality. And that tells us about how they prefer to behave when they're in their natural state. So when they're you know, pretty much stress-free, unencumbered, doing their own thing and how they prefer to behave, sorry, and how they behave when they're under stress, when they're being watched or observed by other people, when they're not quite in their comfort zone. So some of you may have heard of behavioral tools, including DISC, in a metrics, et cetera, et cetera. So those tools really help us make the unseen, so what's going on under the waterline, the majority of the iceberg seen and brought to the top, okay? The time has flown by and I'm sure you guys wanna know how and where can you apply this information? Anybody wanna know? Anybody wanna know? I'm waiting, I wanna hear, I can't move on until I hear from you guys, do you wanna know? Do you? Are you serious? I'm not, seeing, I'm not seeing enough comments. Come on, guys. Give me some fire. Give me some fire. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba 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 fire emojis. Okay, 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 okay. So I see you want to you wanna go forward. One of the things that I really, really, really always like to leave people with is what is the self? Right, we're talking about self, understanding self, identifying yourself with color, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's like to do some fun activities to elicit those things. Thank you, Christine. Self, when it comes down to it, and there's many different selves. We've got our emotional spell, self, our spiritual self, our mental, psychological, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes down to it, anybody wanna know what self really means? Anybody, tell me, tell me, tell me. Sure you wanna know? Sure you wanna know? Yes? No? Maybe so? Some fire emojis, please. Ego? 
Mm, so, mm, the self, guys. And for anyone, I know there's some studious ones of you out there that are taking copious notes in your pen and pad that you're going to review later. Some of you that are taking copious notes that are never going to read those notes ever. <coughs> Red. <coughs> anyway, sorry. Um, that was really me. And there are some of you on your computer that are tapping away and typing away. Okay. This is one of the most important things you could ever know definition wise in your life. One of the most important. That's why I'm grounding, calming myself before I deliver this information to you. Because I can see you want to know. Self is the thing that distinguishes you apart from everybody else. It's the thing that you struggle to articulate when somebody asks you who you are and you come up with a job title or more often you look like a deer in headlights or you're stumbling. That's the seat of your power. That's where your ring is. What distinguishes you from everybody else? And we use the tools and behavioral science and behavioral mastery to elicit, to make unseen seen who you are. What distinguishes you apart from everybody else on a deep level? Not, I belong to this community, this is my color, I'm in this place, no. Because those things can also belong to other people. I'm talking about the you that was a child that would sit there for hours doing a X activity. The self that still now has a love for certain things, you're drawn, you're magnetized to certain things. The self that thinks in a certain way that is completely different from everybody else. Even if you're similar to other people. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. So I'm a person with dyslexia, and I say with, very clearly, dyspraxia and psychotopic sensitivity, which is the brain and eye not quite talking to itself. I struggled with aspects of education and school and thought I was dumb because I was a fish being judged by its ability to climb a tree. And I didn't find out these things about my person until I was much later on in life. I'm not going to give away my age. Now I know and understand myself, my unique mix of dyslexia, dyspraxia, and scotopic sensitivity makes me a bionic machine when it comes to people. And let me explain. Has anybody ever heard of the term called super recognizer? Right? Anybody in the chat, drop a one if you've heard of a super recognizer. Okay, right. A super recognizer is somebody that has above average ability with things like face recognition. So I don't know if you guys remember during the riots in London, the courts were backed up, right? One of the things that people did, and I was not involved in this process, so don't, don't come for me. One of the things that the court system did is they employed people who were super recognizers to view hours, hours, thousands of hours of footage to identify people, okay? Right? So because of my unique mix of dyslexia, dyspraxia, and specific sensitivity, it makes me a bionic machine. How? I'm tuned in and wired to people like a tuning fork. I can notice subtle differences in the tone, the breadth, the depth of someone's voice, the timber of someone's voice. If I've seen you once and I see you 25 years later, 99.999% chance I'm going to remember your face. I've seen people that I haven't seen since I was five or six years old and they were like, oh my God, how did you remember? Because of the way my brain is wired, I am wired to be a people connector and a people recognizing machine on a very, very delicate, minute level. That attention to detail does not carry over to things like reading and writing, right? But because I know that about myself, that is something that is indistinguishable. The way I express my genius and my rings is completely indistinguishable to anybody else's. So I am part of the volunteer pool at the University of Greenwich um, face and voice recognition department because I've scored in the region 
I've tested highly in terms of my ability to be able to recognize face and voice, right? Now, the old me would never have been able to value that because all I saw with the labels, although I was relieved, was all of the things that were wrong with me, all of the challenges, all of the machinations, all of the times when teachers said certain things about me when they shouldn't, all the times I didn't get the help and support and I wallowed in, okay, well, if someone had just told me this 15 years ago, I would have been different. But I was a different person back then. So even if I had the information, I wouldn't have valued it. I'm now in the process of becoming an accredited super recognizer because that's part of my arsenal. I do it anyway. It's natural, it's in me. I will know within two milliseconds if I speak to you on the phone whether there is something wrong with you. You can't hide that from me because I'm tuned in in that way because the way that my mind thinks. I'm an amazing storyteller. I have the ability to connect and influence people's behavior. I have the ability to let people see themselves in technicolor because I'm people orientated and because I'm tuned and wired and made in a certain way, that's my power. That's what enables me to do the work that I do with people. That's what enables me to help others unlock their rings because of the way I'm made, the storytelling ability, the influence, the attention to people detail, the face, the voice recognitions, the gestures, the mannerisms, being able to hear what has not been said and not just what is said, because we all listen differently. You heard of five lo love languages? Well, you have four listening languages too, right? And the way you listen, guys, I need to get quiet for this one. The way you listen, your listening language affects the way that you recall information and interact with other people. Think about that in the workplace. We spend up to 70% of the day communicating with other people, whether it's text message, whether it's email, whether it's voicemail, whether it's Zoom, whether it's customer facing. But yet we don't know that we have four listening languages, at least, right? So I know myself, Letitia, she guessed it. I'm a high yellow. Out of zero to 100, I'm a 99. I was made for this. Plus I study this. I'm going on another course in a few weeks. That's gonna teach me how to listen better. And that's me who's a super recognizer, who's part of volunteer pools because of how highly I test for voice recognition and I'm going on a listening course because I know I can be better and I know I can do better, right? And show up better for other people and show up better for myself. So the self is what makes you indistinguishable. So what makes you indistinguishable from everybody else? A lot of the keys to this are in childhood. What did you naturally gravitate towards? What could you have spent hours effortlessly doing what were the things, oh, this is one. What were the things your parents told you not to do? Parents, I love us, I've got two children. One of mine is grown, he's 20 something. What are the things your parents told you, uh, no, don't be doing that, don't waste time on that because you can't make any money doing that. Don't waste time on that, you can't make a career doing that. Don't waste, and we're not say that parents, there was not some truth but often they did the best that they could with the information that they had. We all do. I'm a mom to two. I'm doing the best I can. But my children are individuals and they have an assignment. They were sent here with an assignment, right? What are the things that your parents told you not to do and not to focus on? Often the key is in those details, okay? Where, okay, drawing. And, and the thing is you can make either a hobby and get enrichment or make a career out of anything. I saw a guy the other day on YouTube who gets paid to blow bubbles. Now you might not have a frame of reference how you could turn what your ring is, what your genius is, what makes you uniquely you in something commercially viable, but it's possible. And you might not wanna make it commercially viable. You might wanna have it as a hobby. 
Those are the things that feed our soul because that's who we are. So I wanna tell you where you can apply these, where you can apply behavioral mastery and understanding of yourself. Because as within, so without. Your life will grow in direct parallel and ratio to how much you know yourself. Because when you can tune into you and have compassion to you, you can tune into others and have compassion to our brothers. There are certain things about certain people that just rub us up the wrong way. Agreed or agreed? Every one of us that's walking this earth is trying to keep ourselves safe. And our behaviors are adaptations of how we've kept ourselves safe. And as much as things annoy you about other people, and I'm not talking about disrespect or anything like that, we're not talking about that. As much as you, you are annoyed by other people, maybe, maybe not as detailed as you, right? Don't take action as fast as you. They're not as people-centered as you. Understand, we all have a core fear that we are trying to keep ourselves safe from. And that is what manifests in our behavior. Again, I'm not talking about disrespectful, derogatory, abusive, whatever. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We don't do extremism. I'm talking about having compassion for your brother or sister when they're not behaving exactly how you want them to behave, right? Because they're not behaving like you. We were taught to treat people as you wanted to be treated. Dash that way, that's the golden rule. The platinum rule is treat people as they want to be treated, right? So the first thing is we're gonna use these tips, tools, know-how, understanding, with ourselves, because as within, so without. There are three primary, most important relationships that you will have. The relationship you have with yourself is the primary and sets the tone for your whole life. You first, you first, as within, so without. During the ages of 20 and 70, the two primary relationship areas that you're gonna have are your spouse, and your work colleagues, get those wrong to your peril. Because the amount of time you spend with friends will drop between the ages of 20 to 70. I'm not saying that you don't see your friends because everyone's always like, yeah, but I always go out with my friends and we go on holidays and whatever. I'm talking about broad base. The time you spend with friends and your children, parents, <coughs> mothers talking to you, the time you spend with your children between the ages of 20 and 70 will fall off a cliff. The people that you're going to spend the most time with are your spouse and your work colleagues. Do not get these two areas wrong, people, or don't keep getting them wrong. We can start wrong. We can't keep getting them wrong because those are the two groups of people that add exponentially to our peace, our contentment, and our happiness. So I want to talk to the mothers right now. I don't want to hear, no, I put my children first. No, because they're going to be out the door. And that's why some of us are suffering because we spend too much time on these children. Not that we don't love our children and we don't invest in them, but I want you to love you like you love your, your babies. And dads too, because there are some dads out here that are doing the same thing. I want you to love you like you love your children. Tired in these streets of hearing about parents. Oh, I did this, I did these to these kids, I did this. I... Who asked you? Who asked you to do for the children? And not them. So it's your relationship with you first, your spouse and your work colleagues. Statistically, research, not, not me saying it, go and look at the research. Exponentially adds to your peace, contentment or happiness or exponentially adds to your self-loathing, depression, all of these things. If you want to get what's outside of you, Right, if you wanna deal with the limiting beliefs, if you wanna deal with the self-sabotage, if you wanna deal with changing things in your outer circumstances, understand that it's a reflection of your reality. Okay, I wanna hear very, very quickly from you guys in the chat, what have you learned today? Because as Leon always says, you're gonna to learn today. What have you learned? What are your insights? What are some tips? What are you gonna take forward? before we carry on to the next section. Self-love. Okay, guys, drop some more stuff in the chat. Insights. What are we gonna do? Tips, anything you've learned? 
anything you knew before, but you've never been reminded about. Not being burnt out. Know thyself more, me first, right? And putting you first, by the way, caveat doesn't mean we don't care about other people doesn't mean that we don't take other people's needs into consideration. Again, like I say, I don't do extremism. So we're not, we're not saying that we're going to leave the picnic them in the yard and we're just going to go out on a two-week holiday. We're not saying that. We're saying that we're going to love ourselves like we love them children, like we love them babies. Okay? For those of us that feel inclined, because some of us, we're like a bit missing in that area. But anyway, right? So lots of learnings. Treat people the way they want to be treated. That means you need to observe them but you will be able to observe them in direct proportion to the way that you are able to observe yourself. If you want to have a better relationship with your work colleagues, not them ones that are just crazy and there ain't nothing we can do about them. I'm not, I'm not saying that. If you want to have a better relationship with the people you employ, the people that you manage, if you want to get the best out of other people, observe them and give them what they need. Treat them how they want to be treated. You'll be surprised what an afternoon off will do for somebody who's people orientated. You will have their loyalty. Right? You will have their loyalty. Take a task off of the desk of a red person, you will have their loyalty. Give proper instruction systems, processes to a blue and you will have their loyalty, right? I could go on and on and on and on. Now we are going to move on to a short Q and A, which I think master ceremonies, Mr. Marshall is going to be in charge of. Anyone who has a question, Please put your hand, raise your hand. Raise your hand, Not family. Before you raise your hand, though, family, let's mm -hmm. put someone's, show your appreciation for what Dana just went through and just let us know and let me know what you got from that. That was very, very powerful. Big up everyone putting ones in the chat. Extremely powerful. I know I learned a lot of stuff from that. Now, there is going to be a QA. and a It's going to be a short Q&A. Please raise your hands, family, or you can put your question in the Q&A section. And VIP members, there will be an extended Q&A. Straight after we finish this one, we're going to jump on a Zoom meeting and you guys can ask whatever questions you want to Dana in the extended. That's for VIP members. If you're not, this is your chance, family. Raise your hands and we'll come to you and you can ask your question live. So we've got Tisha. You can unmute your mic, sis. Hey, Liam. How you doing, sis? I'm good. I'm Gucci. Okay, awesome webinar. Just a really quick question. What activities uh -huh. are there for better understanding your uniqueness? Okay, so one of the best activities, if I'm understanding what you're saying, is to actually engage with something called personality profiling. So that is where you take some sort of assessment. It's not a right or wrong. You answer a series of questions and then it will elicit based on your answers and taking a snapshot at that time, how you like to behave in general, okay? And we can go as far as eliciting why you behave in that way. And that gives you a deep understanding of, of who you are. So those are some of the best ways that I've found. I hope that helped. Yeah, like the Myra's one. Myra's there are there are many, many different ones, I'm sure. And we could we could take it as long and as far. Um, I use some specific ones. Um, disc for those people who are spiritually minded. I have, you know, other ones that I use, but those are incredible, I must say, tools and they give us a guide. They're not the magnum opus and they're not gonna tell us everything and it's not, you know, crystal balls. It just gives us a really good indication of the what, the why and the how of what's going on with you at that time. And now we can start to pull out specifics that you can implement to help you move forward. Thanks for that, sis. Lorna, you can unmute your mic, sis. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna say uh, rainbow because you said I should remind you. Yes. So everybody effectively, Lorna, is a rainbow. 
So when I mention the four colors, we will each have a red, yellow, green, and blue. It's the proportion of the balance of those colors that gives us an eye into your behavior. So for example, if someone is a high red and a high blue, they will probably be lower on green and lower on the yellow, right? So they all still exist. And what that tells us, if you're very high on red and very high on, on blue, you will be going at 55 million miles an hour sometimes. And then all of a sudden you'll find yourself coming to a screeching halt and you wouldn't even know why. You kind of get into a bit of paralysis. That's because you go high up on the conscientiousness and the perfectionism, and that will slow you right down, which can be incredibly frustrating for somebody that is a red who likes to also move very fast and incredibly confusing. Does that help, Lorna? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you, Lorna. And Valdo, you can unmute your mic. Hello, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, see you loud and clear. Oh, awesome. Um, so I am I am Portuguese and I'm in England for like 12, 13 years. And then okay. only now in my 30s, I'm able to, you know, do this dive deep. And great grateful I am, I am to you because you are, I think you give these categories with the colors to kind of pinpoint yeah. the type of personalities we have, right? My, yes. my question is, what is the best way to cement mm -hmm. our um, personality traits and mm -hmm. also once we get to know ourselves better, how to direct mm -hmm. our professional life. Um, because I, I'm not gonna lie, I've um, came a long way and I um, came off the religion, sorry, the, the Christian re religion. Because I see okay. mental health and then psychology and all these things, because I'm, I've got a strong interest towards that. I found that okay, out, okay. away from it, I was able to find myself better. The problem okay. is- Thank you. Let me, let me just, I, sorry to cut your flow, because I want to yeah, make sure on. that I heard Good. you yeah. correctly and yeah. I'm not just making something up in my head right no problem no so problem, the no two problem. questions that you asked mm -hmm. was what's the best way mm -hmm. to cement your understanding and mm -hmm. then how can you use that professional wise so what I'm hearing from you and if I'm wrong please do correct me <laughs> yeah. you want to know how to understand and you want to yeah. know how to apply um how to apply because I think yes. the, the understanding bit I'm I'll say 80 percent there and then okay. before I finish that, I want to know how to, you know, take, uh, to make Perfect. decisions Perfect. professionally Perfect. that helps me. With my, yeah. Okay, wonderful. So regardless of how, where you are in terms of your understanding, like I said, I'm still doing courses, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have yeah. a regular, regular review because sometimes we just, we forget the finer points, right? And the finer yeah. points are really important. Yeah. the balance, mm -hmm. for example, of, of, of the colors. So it's about revisiting this, I would say at least, some people do it once a quarter, biannually or annually to check in with yourself. Secondly, yes. again, it's about going inward and looking at the things that have always interested you. Yep. Thirdly, would be working with a professional in this area who can then pinpoint for you and say, okay, because you have this particular temperament, these are the particular areas that you lend, that you lend yourself to very well naturally, right? That you're going okay. to be able to work best within Mm -hmm. And that's going to be working with your nature as opposed to against your against. nature. So continue checking in with yourself, work mm -hmm. with a professional to help you in that area because they'll yep. be able to see the subtleties of things that you can't necessarily see. I hope that helps, Valdo. Thank you very much for your question. It was quite clear. Thank you for your help, yeah? Thank You're you. welcome. All right, so we've got a couple questions in the Q&A, sis. Quick fire mm -hmm. answers. All right, okay, so... Yep. The first one says, how does a blue cope with taking on people's emotions? That's a really difficult question to answer because I'd really need some more context about what the person means. So I might not be able to give a full answer. However, I will say this. Understand that by your blue nature, you are not people orientated. So you, you kind of have to sit with that aspect of things and accept that that's who you are and the way that you are wired. Doesn't mean be mean and horrible to people, but first of all is about the acceptance piece, okay? I'm task orientated. Task is always gonna come before people, right? Secondly, people will engage with you the way that you allow yourself to be engaged with. And with blues, what typically happens is they will get silently underneath 
resentful of people that are putting up on them because they, they find it difficult to have that boundary and structure and say no, right? So it goes back to some of the tips I was giving about the different ways to say no and be honest with people. If you feel like people are encroaching on your space and they're putting up on you, find ways that sit with who you are as a person to say, you know what? I don't think I've got the capacity for that. But don't sit and stew and let people put upon you and not put any boundaries in place. This is completely a boundary issue. And what happens with blues is they will try and avoid conflict. And a conflict avoided is a conflict compounded. Guys, let me say that again. A conflict avoided is a conflict compounded, right? And blues don't like confrontation. So they think that in avoiding the confrontation, they're dealing with the issue. People will just put upon you more and more and you'll get more and more frustrated. I hope that helps and that's given you some guidance and direction. Go ahead, Leon. All right. This one says, great webinar. Thank you. I just wanted to reconfirm how best to deal with yellow and green personality types. Okay. So again, I don't have full context. So please understand that I'm answering based on what I can see on the screen. Yellows have a need, especially people who are in a high yellow need. And we would, we would define high... Typically anything that's over 70 to 100, because the, the scale is kind of from 100, zero to 100, right? So I'm a 99, pretty much as high as you're gonna get. We have a need to be seen, right? The primary way you deal with the yellow is you allow us to be seen with checks and balances, because sometimes we'd be acting a fool out here and we can't allow that, right? We like public recognition. We like to know that we've done a good job. We like to be told that we've been done a good job. We like to be the center of attention. Let us have the limelight, checks and balances, right? If you're gonna give us feedback, give us feedback in front of other people. We love that, right? The need is to be seen. So let us be, the minute you try and push, put baby in a corner, right? We're gonna Patrick way do the thing. We can't keep baby in a corner. You cannot keep a yellow in the corner. This is whether an adult or a child. Because what we will do is we will just amp up. We will turn up that sunshine, okay? With the green, safety, security, structure. They're like the earth. Think of the earth, green earth, you got it. Compassion, and they're people focused. So they need to know what's in it for the people. They won't do it just because there's something in it for them. Wrong conversation, it's all about the people. It's all about the foundation, the steadiness and the focus. So give them that that foundation and security that they need. Hope that helps. All right. This one is interesting. This one says, I am a red and I realize my spouse is a high red too. How do I bring what out some that? balance in us? Do I focus on myself first? That is a fantastic question, Emma. And thank you for being so transparent and for answering. I feel hot, boy. I feel hot in your house, right? I feel the heat coming from here, okay? You're right, your first observation was, do I deal with myself first? Yes, it's always self first. Regardless of we're talking about observing other people, as within, so without. There will be needs that you have, that you need to balance in you first. It's so easy to look outside to other people, and obviously if it's your spouse, you want you know, harmony in the home, but by tending to yourself, slow in, down, slow down to a level that's still comfortable to you and go inward. What does Amma need? Where is Amma struggling? Where does Amma need help and support? Because Reds, the I got it crew, I got it. I'm a Red, I got it. And then you're resentful because people are always treating you like you got it, right? So start with you and have an honest conversation with hubby and say, you know what? I'd really like us to have some more balance how do you think I could contribute to that? And just listen, don't interrupt, don't interject, just listen. So that's the way that I would approach it. Hope that helps, Emma. Uh, and we're gonna say one got more. Time, one more, and this one says, what are the four listening languages? Okay, the four listening languages are reflective listening. I don't have time to go into what these mean, you'll have to look them up. Contextual listening. Okay, analytical listening. And I just lost the fourth one. Anyway, go find out, girl. Oh boy, whoever you are, go find out. There's four, it just, my mind just went blank. Overexcited. See, yellows, detail, 
we can we can lose the plot sometimes because we're so uh, out here. Take note. All right. Uh, people were asking about your website, how they can get in contact with you. So I think that would be a good segue to, for you to continue. Yes. Okay, guys. So I want to say a thank you to everyone in this chat. I'm so honoured to be here with you today. Um, and thank you for your patience. Usually uh, we make sure that there's slides because we know there are some people <clears throat> who really benefit from slides in the greens. And unfortunately, it's been a rough time for us over at this side. No excuses, but reasons. We've had three bereavements in the last 10 days, um, unfortunately. So we didn't have the slides. We would have had everything prettied up for you. But here we are. But what we do have, okay, is a link that I think um, Leon is going to drop in the chat now. In that link are a number of different things which I'm going to take you through now. And at the bottom of that link tree, is contact details of how you can get in contact with us, okay? So click the link tree at the bottom, contact details, we'll get this thing together. So very expediently, what I'm gonna go through, is there anybody that wants to find out how they can deepen their learning, knowledge, understanding of self, each other, together, have fun, create a supportive environment, create an environment for high performance, change that's what we call hyper performance because we believe in unusually energetic results not showing my yellow at all here am i anyone i want to see some ones i want to see some twos i want to see some 21 seconds ago about 21 seconds ago see me like let me know let me in this video i got 21 seconds before i got to go you see me in the video you see me in the video see me like let me know let me in the studio i got 21 seconds before i got to go Fire emojis. Anyone want to find out how they can now take this to the next level and make this practical and start implementing these things in their life? I want to see some fire, some fire, some fire. Let's go. Fire emojis. I'm not speaking until I've got more. I want like 16, 16 bars, 16 fire emojis. Come on, let me go. Okay, the people don't want to find out. So... There are a few different ways that you can interact with us. And when I say us, that is myself and the Hidden Science Academy. We've put some amazing things together just for you guys. You cannot find the stuff that we've co-created anywhere else. You can't go on a website. You can't go on a link. You can't even come to me to find it. Only here, live and direct now and today. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you kindly. Much appreciated. And then also there is a link to um, some products and services from the High Performance Group Limited. Anyone who has a query outside of that, emails there, you can contact us and obviously we got up. So the first thing that if you feel that you would benefit from a one-to-one, -one, there's two different types of people. There are people that benefit from one-to-one -one and want that more fine tuning, right? If you're looking for world-class results, business and personal, the thing that I would tell you to do is to go for our advanced insights um, package. That is some personal one-on-one -on -one time with me via Zoom with three different personality assessments. So they are the DISC, the motivators and emotional intelligence. They tell us the, the how you're behaving how you like to behave, why and the what of your behavior. And then we'll have some one-on-one -on -one time um, where I'm going to be able to coach you. And we can put a plan together of how you're going to implement that. Yes, yeah, so that's advanced insights. If you're looking for world-class results, and that's one-to-one, -one, normally that package is £3,000. Because we love the Hidden Science Academy so much, we've put together that package for £2,400. VIP members, if you want to jump on that, you get an extra bonus, but you're going to find out about that bonus later. For anyone who wants to get their, you know, get your feet wet, right? Kind of find out a little bit more, but maybe you're not looking for world-class results, but you want that one-to-one -one fine tuning time. That would be our inner, inner insights package. That's one-to-one -one with me. Get it while you can. And that's a disc assessment and coaching time, again, where we can fine tune. Usually that's a thousand pounds. Hidden Science Academy family only, can't find this anywhere else, is 800 pounds. And VIP members, again, you're gonna get something extra, 
Okay, so that's the one-to-one stuff. Hear me now. What I want to talk about is the group stuff. Oh my giddy giddy gosh. Okay. Leon and I sat down and we were like, right, what 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 are the people that need? What are the people that need? What are the people that want? And we're gonna give it to you. So we have for one night only, well actually it's a day, but one night only sounds better. The Inner Insights Live One Day event in collaboration with the Hidden Science Academy and the Hyper Performance Group Limited. People, one day only, right? We are going to be doing some stellar work together. I'm going to be the lead on the day, so you're going to get to spend some time with moi. We're going to be going through your vision, your life, crafting a vision. We're going to get down into the detail of understanding you, your behavior, who you are, what makes you tick, the best environments for you. Baldo asked about how do I apply this to career? Well, come along to the Inner Insights Day and we'll be able to show you how to apply who you are that lends itself to the best careers for you. We're going to be looking at what are your superpowers? What are your rings, family? Drop Fire emojis if you want to find out what your rings are, right? They're inside you. They're there already. They're there already. They're already. Let's get them out. Very importantly, we're going to be looking at where are your blind spots? We all have them. Every single one of us have blind spots and challenges. And as I like to say, blind spots are inevitable, right? We can't take the back of our head. Challenges are manufactured. Let me give you an example why. Let's say I'm a red. People like to hire people that are like them. We're all reds. What we've now just done is we've compounded all of the challenges that come with reds. And that's why I believe that there are certain corporations out in these streets who are slacking, jucking, and jiving and not doing as well as they could do. <clears throat> cool, Dana. Because they're just hiring the same type of person. You compound. Remember I said conflict avoided is conflict compounded? Same, same, same hiring. Same, same, same people. Same, same, same circle and environment. You're collectively compounding all of your challenges and weaknesses. So we're going to see your blind spots. We're going to see where the challenges are. And we're going to put a practical step-by-step plan in place for you. And we're going to do that together as a family, as a group, for one day only on Saturday, the 27th of May, 2023. I want to address this up front. No, there isn't another day. Yes, it's a Saturday. Yes, it's going to be the 27th of May. No, there isn't going to be another day. You have to organize your circumstances if you want to be there, right? Because I know if I came and I said, here's a key to Lamborghinis. I'm in St. Vincent, people. I live in the Caribbean. That's why my skin's so nice, right? If I said to you, oh, I've got a free Lamborghini, but you've got to come to you got to come to St. Vincent to pick up the keys from me, but it's worth 170K. And I'm giving it away for free because I'm just baited like that, right? You would find a way to go and get ticket money to come and meet me. So I don't want to hear nothing about I can't make it because, and it might be a serious reason. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that there are not reasons. If the motivation is high enough, if the will is high enough, you're going to make it work, right? So that's Saturday the 27th of May. We're going to go through everything mentioned and more. VIP members will have a bonus, right? And that family is £349, available by the link that Leon has dropped in, okay? Now, for those of you that are like, mm, I don't think I'm really, I'm a bit, I don't really like crowds, you know, a bit blue, pardon the pun, yeah? I don't really want to do the crowd thing, or I just want to find a little bit more out what we've developed is something just for you, okay? So you're going to get a, a access to a disc assessment to fill that out. And I've actually recorded an explainer video because these things can be quite complicated. You know, 50-page report. There's only going to be so much you can glean as a person who is not a specialist in how to read it, okay? So this package is for those who would like to get an assessment done. They don't really want to do the crowd thing or they don't really want to do the event thing yet. And they would like a video to walk them step by step through how to read that report so they can apply. Okay. If you are interested in that package and you want to purchase, you're going to need to email us. Okay. So in the link tree, there's a link to email. Click the email and just put in the subject 
disc assessment and recording. Okay, and then we'll send you a link. So that's a 199 package. So just to go over, if you're looking for world-class results, that's the advanced insights, usually 3,000, 2,400 for the hidden science family. And that's one-to-one. -one. If, you're, if you're looking to get your toe, dip your toe in and want one-to-one -one help, that's our inner insights. That's a thousand pounds, 800 pounds for the hidden science family. That's where you get. If you want to come along to the one day event and have that deep dive, okay? That's three, four, nine for the hidden science family, okay? Link included. If you would like the recording of how to read your report and your report, that's 199. You're going to have to email us for that so we can send you out an invoice. Once the invoice is paid, you'll get a link to your assessment and you will also get the recording of the video, okay? And with everyone that comes to the one day event, which is gonna be lit, by the way, as well as informative and life-changing, we do lit, informative, life-changing, standard, okay? Everyone that signs up for the 349 one day event will also get an assessment and a questionnaire to fill in before the event so you can come with your report and we can do some live coaching and we can get this thing going. That's me done for the segment. Thank you, sis. Thank you everyone for joining us. We will be going into the extended Q&A VIP members. If you haven't received the link, then please email us now so we can send you the link if you're a VIP member so you can join us when we do the extended session. So big up all the people that have joined us. Thank you for joining us. Hope you learned some really good stuff. Uh, we really want to get your feedback. Make sure you join our WhatsApp group if you like this webinar and you want, you know, you want to know when we're doing something like this again. I feel like this went down really well. So who knows? We probably will be doing something like this again very soon. So if you want to know when the next one is, join our mailing list, join our WhatsApp so you can um, get the notifications of when we're doing this again, family. Thank you for joining us. We've been we're posting the links, we're posting the WhatsApp group as well. So join our WhatsApp group so you can stay um, notified of when we're doing stuff. If you are a VIP member and you want to join us for the extended Q&A, we're literally starting in the next five minutes. If you haven't received it, if you haven't received the link, the Zoom link for the, the extended Q&A, then email us. I'll put it in the chat. Email us at the Hidden Science Academy. at gmail.com literally email us now if you haven't received the link so the hidden science academy at gmail.com vip members next five minutes stay right there you're gonna join us in the meeting so you can go deep with dana you can ask her any questions or just give her some feedback just honest feedback straight away feedback thank you everyone for joining us Really appreciate you joining us. Leon, can I, yes. can I just say, sorry to cut your flow, King. For anybody else that may have any other queries, you may have listened to this and you may have thought, you know, I know someone that's got an event coming up and Dana would make a, a perfect speaker. I'd love Leon and Dana to come and do something for my business or my organization or my team. Please do click the link in the link tree and email us. And then we will be able to give you next steps for anything that's outside of what we've curated together um, for the Hidden Science Academy today and myself and the team will see obviously what we can do if it fits and flows. Thank you everybody so much. It's been wonderful. You've indulged me. This is my, my passion. My love is people and I want to get us them rings, baby. Rings and yachts and things. <laughs> <laughs> all right, family. Hopefully the VIP members, you've all got the link. If you haven't got the link, make sure you email us now. Check your spam, check your junk mail, because we have we sent it out earlier today. So you should all have the, the link in your email already if you're a VIP member. But if not, send us an email right now. We are going to give us about five minutes and then we're going to be joining you VIP members and we'll go into the extended Q&A session. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care and we'll see you all soon. Pleased to see you this afternoon. What did you think of the uh, proceedings? Very, very good. I mean, you know, I just think more and more people need to know about it. More and more people need to come um, and get educated, really.
Is this your first uh, hidden? No, it Acad isn't actually. No, no. Nah? I've been to I've been to a couple yeah. before. Yeah. Okay, and how are you finding them? I love them. I this is why I'm here. I you know I love them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you'd recommend it to others to come along? Hundred percent. I mean, if you really want to know a lot more about the hidden science of almost everything, they should come for sure. Thank you so much and uh, look forward to seeing you at the next one. That is brilliant. It's yeah. just so informative, mind-blowing. Um, it's something that, you know, it's just put me on a journey of knowing thyself. It's just fantastic. Excellent. We love to hear that. Uh, see you at another one? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be in the music. Okay, yeah. I'll come and yeah. find you.